from Beverungen in Germany. Welcome to the GCN show. From Col de la Croix. Corsica. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN show. show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, we manage to both bid farewell to Fabian Cancellara and yet also look forward to the 2017 Tour de France in the same show. We certainly do. Plus, we feature ingenious bike security, an epic ride app, plus we tenuously link yet another celebrity to the world of cycling. Plus, of course, all of our usual favourites. It's time now for Caption of the Week. Now, last week's picture was of the legend that is Eddie Merckx, looking rather sad and slightly forlorn. Yeah, poor old Eddie. Uh, and the winner is Dalchen, who said, UCI, I'm still waiting for my red GCN Camelback bottle. That's pretty good. Yeah, and that's the, and he is still that's waiting, probably the he? face that... Well, he, He's still there, apparently, waiting. Yeah, that's the face a lot of you probably were pulling. Again, we do apologise. The, uh, the actual results of that, uh, dossier they still haven't come in yet, have they? No, they're, st they're I'm, still. I'm still a free man. We've got barristers still looking through them. Yeah, right. Congratulations. Get in touch, and we will send you a GCN Camelback water bottle, one we've actually got that's uh, just behind you there. Check it out. Right, this week's caption competition for you to get your teeth into is this. That's quite a surreal-looking photo. I, maybe I'd better get us started. I don't know. Mm, go for it. Yeah. All right. Perhaps it was a good thing that the Cannondale Draft Pack cheerleading squad didn't have too many reasons to celebrate this year. Again, so I'm going to set the bar very, very low. Good luck with that one. Shouldn't be too hard to beat. Stick your captions in the comment section down below and we will choose a winner to win a Camelback water bottle. Booyah. It's official. Fabian Cancellara, AKA Spartacus, has ridden his last race as a professional rider. Bringing the curtain down on a career that is one of the most impressive, I think, of any professional in the world. Without doubt. Yeah. Now, his last race over the weekend, in fact, was the Japan Cup Criterium, where him and his teammates donned a special Farewell Fabian Fluo Trek Segafredo kit, and all the riders as well wore, they didn't wear bikes. You cannot wear a bike. <laughs> Matt, you can't wear bikes. And they all rode on special Fluo Trek Madonna as well. Two wonderful applause from a massive crowd. Big fan base out in Japan. Absolutely. Now his Palmares is so extensive that if we were to read it out, you'd probably all switch off before we even got to 2006. So we thought we would give you our personal Fabian Cancellara highlights. I'll start things off. Actually, his first ever Tour de France stage victory, 2004. And I'll confess that forgive me, I was a mountain biker at the time, that that was the first time I'd ever heard of Fabian Cancellara. Riding for Fassa Bortolo, that was when he really came to my attention, and it was a mighty impressive victory that then. Well, mine, Cy, si, is stage, th stage three of the 2007 Tour de France. Now, Fabian has already won the prologue, so he's adorned in the yellow jersey. I, I remember it. It's yeah. the stage to Compiègne. Uh, just over the last 1,200 metres, there's a kind of short, cobbled section. He moves up the outside of the bunch. There's already a breakaway of five riders about 150 metres up the road. Sat down, he bridges across, with about 800, 900 metres to go to the breakaway, speeds straight past them. One or two riders try and get on his wheel. They've got no chance at all and then continues to solo down at the finishing straight. He gets almost caught by the bunts, but he's just got enough time to lift his arms up in celebration. And I remember watching that and actually weeping a little bit. A little, some, some tears came out. It was probably cool. I, what I love most about that one is the fact that there's a lead out guy, isn't there, trying to get on his yeah, wheel. And you just can just- full on. To, to literally be sprinting to try and get on another rider's wheel and not manage it, and the other guy sat down. That really puts into perspective how fast how much power he was putting out. Apparently it was one of the, the early iterations of what we now know to be the Watches Bazooka. That is a good fact. Yeah. Now, we will have more Fabian Cancellara sure. highlights coming up later in the show, so make sure you stay tuned for that. It's time now for GCN's hacks and bodges. Now, first up we have a possible GCN video hack. Now, thanks very much to Kolstakov for pointing out that last year's winterproofing video was reposted by Lifehacker, who have quite a lot of followers. Let's, right, they, do, let, yeah. they do, several million in fact. Thank but possibly even more interesting was when I looked at the thumbnail. Is that just me or have you got lasers coming out of your eyes? Yeah, that's the cyborg in action, hack of the century, <laughs> right there. 
Well, next up is this on Twitter from Stu Nicholson. Whoa. Check this alternative to leg warmers shared on our bike forum recently. Yet you would not need leg warmers or tights. It's basically, it's like, is that an actual radiator with two ends of a bike welded on? I think Isn't someone it? spent a lot of time and effort putting that together. I'd say that's, that's well, they've done it on purpose, haven't they? That's probably a hack, let's face it. Right, Ricardo Ortiz, uh, he's submitted this for GCN hack status because uh, the bike with the light bracket on went in to be repaired. So he had to make a light bracket out of two zip ties and a pencil. Good bodging. Now, next up we have this from Andreas Bowman, again on Twitter. Top Gun feeling whilst riding my bike in full gear. I drilled some holes into my Bell Javelin shield to fit a Garmin Variavision. Look at oh, that. Cool. That does look like the Terminator, it's doesn't proper it? Proper space age, isn't it? Yeah. I like that one. I like that's pretty smooth. This one I really like from uh, Walter Hugerbeets. Uh, he rode from the south of France to the Netherlands with a broken rear derailleur by binding it with some wire. Again, another cracking bodge. That's a get your home bodge right there. I do like those. And he says he could shift seven out of ten cogs. That's well, that's almost a hack. Man. I, and do you know why I like that even more? Go on, go on. Because he's used the word cogs rather than sprockets. <laughs> Great stuff. Now, this last one, this is unbelievable and I think probably slightly dangerous. But Stephen Fish has said uh, that refillable aerosol cans of WD-40. So WD-40 refills apparently are really cheap. Didn't know they did those. Yeah, no, I didn't either. But you can't obviously refill your aerosol can. So he has... <laughs> By the look of things, welded a Schrader valve he has. onto a can of WD-40. I dread to think how flammable. Anyway, presumably it was empty. And then he says, remove the valve core to Schrader valve, uh, depress the spray button to release air, and then refill the WD-40 can, then replace the valve core and inflate to 90 PSI. Do you know what I'm going to say here? What's that? Do not try this at home. No, Can we have some so graphics bad. along the bottom with a big alarm? Don't be so tight as well. I mean, I don't know how much a can of WD-40 is. Not much. Like. Don't, don't blow yourself don't, up. Don't weld a Schrader valve on. Do not try this at home. Nevertheless, though. Great hack, though. Great hack. Keep them coming in. Definitely. Because we uh, un understandably love hacks and bodges. So send them in using the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter and Instagram. And just send us messages on Facebook. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and of course, the big news in the world of cycling last week was the launch of the 2017 route of the Tour de France. Now, the usual mix of star riders uh, with varying degrees of off-bike style attended the glitzy presentation. And the highlight for me, the highlight for me was Roman Bardet, Oof, bringing yeah. the kind of courage and flair that he brings to his racing, to his attire, the white basketball boots, jeans, suit jacket and the dandy little bow tie thing. I thought that was, uh, that was a strong look from the Frenchman. It certainly was. I think your choice of the word courage was the most appropriate in that description. Yep. But for me, in terms of the fashion stakes, it was between uh, Thibaut Pinot and Julien Alaphilippe. Now, for me, it was Alaphilippe that just nudged it ahead of his fellow countrymen, purely because of the contrasting fabric uh, he had on his lapels. Yeah. And, and, of course, great hair as well. But more importantly, Let's talk about the course. Oh yeah, good point. Because it really is, we think, one for the climbers, isn't it? With only 36 kilometres of time trial in Ks. 36 kilometres of time trial in kilometres. That makes sense, doesn't it? Just about. 13 Ks in Dusseldorf for the opening time trial. And then we have to wait pretty much the entire tour to the penultimate stage in Marseille for a further 23 Ks of time trialing. So it's gonna, I think it's gonna kind of be the catalyst for some really aggressive, exciting racing, actually. Well, yeah, and even more interesting than that, for a a climbers tour. There's only three summit finishes. So La Planche des Belles Filles, that is a mouthful, mm. but I've got there in the end. Chris Froome's first ever tour stage win, you remember, back in 2012. Cool. And then uh, Perigude, and then also the Col d'Isoard. But then there are five further mountain stages that finish with descents. So perhaps buoyed up by Froome's daredevil antics from last year, the tour organizers have stuck in a load more. So we are going to see some epic descending showdowns. And perhaps disc brakes and drop a seat post as well. Well, yeah, you certainly wouldn't bet against discs, would you? Especially if it's wet. But then drop a seat posts? Who knows? I know a few teams have been uh, watching some of our videos. Well, yeah, Lloydie did test it out in the summer, didn't he? I tell you what, any team that does try and adopt a dropper post to next year's Tour de France, I'd probably better do a better job of it than Lloydie's 
bodge of the year, sticking a, a third shifter on there. It's slightly over-engineered for the job, that. Yeah, a third lever in this modern era isn't going to cut it. I, I mean, just personally thinking, I was thinking maybe a, a kind of electronic uh, Wi-Fi satellite shifter, yeah. or oh. even take it a bit further afield, thinking out of the box somewhat, uh, perhaps an app. You just get your phone out, drop your post. I think a four mil Allen key is probably more convenient than an app, but still, you've got to think, you know, I thought that was box. pretty revolutionary. But anyway, talking about is. pimping up bikes, next year, Chris Froome on his Pinarello, well, it could be actually a Louis Vuitton Pinarello. Well, kind of, sort of, because the parent company of Louis Vuitton are looking to buy Pinarello. Interesting. Which is quite an interesting move. And imagine if that happens. For one, I think uh, Pinarello's next year will smell far nicer. Well, yeah. They'll certainly cost a lot more, no, one sure. would imagine. And imagine the top tube, the added comfort with all that fabric on the top. Right, moving on to some team news now. And the Irish team for next year that's going to be bidding for Pro Conti status has finalised its roster. So Team Aqua Blue have just acquired the signature of Adam Blythe, the current Britain national champion from Tinkoff. Andy Fenn will be moving over from Team Sky. And then American rider Larry Warbass put us out of our misery after his cryptic tweet last week. And he's confirmed that he's going there as well. Yeah, it was quite an interesting tweet on Twitter last it week. Was. It got a lot of you thinking. First and foremost, was it the Colnago arc? And of course, that's been Project Ooh, TJ Sports. Yeah, Is he moving across to the new team there? Uh, also, was he considering a move to FDJ? Because it's very similar to their yeah, icon. You've got a clover leaf, yeah. But none of those, was it? No. It's a shamrock. It was a shamrock. All right, here's another bit of team news. Nibali is going to join Nibali. I have to explain. Well, yeah, it turns out that Vincenzo's got a brother, Antonio, and he has been racing for Nippo Vini Fantini, but now he's joining Bahrain Merida to join his older brother, Vincenzo. Potentially, we were thinking, because the two do look remarkably similar, maybe it's going to be some kind of team tactics, you know, who's attacked? Is that Vincenzo or is that Antonio? Or, I don't know. See? Yeah, commentator's nightmare as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, but thankfully, Fabio Aru, the third person who looks exactly the same uh, will be staying at Astana. So at least we're wearing different kit. They do look, all three of them do look quite similar, don't they? In addition to that quite remarkable fashion show last week, the Tour de France also announced the route of the 2017 race for women, La Course, which of course forms part of the Women's World Tour. Now, it's going to be the third edition of the event. Um, it's good on one hand, it's been moved from the Champs Elysees to the mountains. Yeah, different it takes type place, of uh, It's completely different. Actually, finishes up the Col d'Isoir, so it's the same finish as the men's, which on one hand I think is great, but it's very short. It's about 65 kilometres, if memory serves me well. Now, I think that's good on one hand, but why couldn't they have kept the Champs Elysees stage in addition and had two separate World Tour races, or at least have a three or four or five day race? Hopefully, you know, things are going to move on yeah. in 2018 because I think the time is right to have a multi-day women's Tour de France, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, the time has, you know, long since been right, hasn't it? They could have even had a race that was as long as the Etap de Tour, the Sportif. It's short, it's far shorter than the Etap, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, we'll we'll let's see. move swiftly on and keep our fingers crossed that ASO sort it out. And so we will move from something that should have been epic but isn't to something that actually really is epic, at least by name. Okay. Yeah. The Epic Ride Weather App. Oh yeah, who doesn't love an epic ride? And now you can download an app to your phone that, and this is actually quite cool actually, you tell it what your route is going to be. So you download your GPX file, either from Strava or wherever, to this app, and then it tells you what the weather is going to be like, factoring in your pace, so how long it's going to take you basically. So if you were to do a 300k epic in the mountains, and you've got five different valleys to go over, it can tell you what it's going to be like when you set off, and then what it's going to be like four hours down the way. Are you going to encounter storms or freezing temperatures? How cool is that? Indeed. Well, finally on the Cycling Shorts, it's time for a tenuous cycling celebrity segment. Oh. Now, Hollywood superstar Ben Stiller the other day tweeted this. Is that, is that it? Yeah, it's tenuous. Rabo Liv's world champion, Talita de Jong, gapped her opposition on the penultimate lap to win the third round of the Telnet UCI Cyclocross World Cup. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It is indeed. She beat Sophie de Burt in second place, and Sana Kant, unfortunately, this week showed that she couldn't. But, but Sophie de Burt now leads the overall standings. Good stuff. Well, over in the men's event, it was former world champion, Mathieu van der Poel, the current Dutch champion, who prevailed, uh, beating current world champion, Wout van Aert, into second place. After van Aert 
well, after Van Aert, sorry, made an uncharacteristic slip up whilst in hot pursuit of Van der Poel. And meanwhile, it was Michael Van Turnout who rounded out the podium. And currently leading the overall standards is the current world champion, Wout Van Aert. Mm. Interesting that you slipped up on pronouncing Wout Van Aert. Uh, Sram did a little video to tell on you how, how to say it. Wout, yeah. How is it? It's Wout, isn't it? <laughs> no. Is it Wout? <laughs> <laughs> Wout. Wout. Oh. Who's Woody? Wout. Really, the hardest part about working with SRAM is getting them to pronounce my name correctly. What? Uh, Wout. Out? Hello, Wout. Hello, Wout. No, it's Wout. What's up? Uh, Wout. Wow. Wout. Wood. Wout. Wout. Hoot. Wout. Wout. Cloud. Wout. Wu-Tang Clan. Wout. Wout. They treat me really well here. Happy birthday, dear Blood Happy birthday to you. We can't forget the Abu Dhabi tour okay. either. And lastly, you'll have seen his videos from out there, but he now gives us his race report. Which at the time was live. Was live. The Abu Dhabi Tour closed out the 2016 season for many of the greatest cyclists in the world, including Greg Van Avon, Mark Cavendish, Elia Viviani, even Peter Sagan made a brief appearance at the UCI Gala earlier in the week. Stage one of the Abu Dhabi Tour went from Madden at Zayed and finished back in the same place. That was won by Italian sprinter Giacomo Nizzolo from John Degenkolb with Mark Cavendish in third. Stage two took place in Abu Dhabi. That was won by Mark Cavendish. On stage three, the riders faced the climb of the Jebel Hafeet, which is one of the hardest climbs I've ridden, actually. That stage was won by Estonian climber Tanel Kanga, who took the overall win with it. And on stage four, it's Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish. I'll tell you what, lastly, understandably delighted with his report there. The timing of it couldn't have been better. And in addition to that, I've never seen the lad smile before. No, look at that smile, look at that face. He looks so happy. He does. It's not lovely to see, though. Tech of the week. This week, leaving aside the bizarrely controversial world, well, if the comments section are anything to go by, of electric folding bikes and turning to locks. Oh, nice one, Matt. This week is security-tastic, because two new products hit the headlines this week. The first is the light lock. Ingenious design. And I think you'll agree, Matt, use of spelling there. Mm. Yeah. Now, having smashed his Kickstarter funding target last year, Professor Neil Barron has duly brought his product to market. Now, it's a flexible bike lock that uses a new material called BioFlexiCore and an innovative push lock closing mechanism. Yeah, and they're pretty light too, at only 1.13 kilograms. So could this be the hipster lock? choice. Well, it could be the hipster lock of choice until you hear about the next one, the skunk lock. And the motivation for designing it was that the friend of one of the founders actually had his electric bike stolen from outside a San Francisco branch of Whole Foods. Does it get more hipster than that? It certainly does. That is the hipster lock of choice. Yeah. And it's no less ingenious because it's a standard U-lock with a booby trap. Yeah, that's right. Basically, the designers wondered if you could design a secure lock that actually made life harder for would-be thieves. And they've done it, haven't they? By putting a gas inside that's so bad smelling that it actually induces vomiting, literally. So anybody that cuts inside the lock will release that gas and probably end up puking on the sidewalk or wherever they may be. Now, if you want to see this particular project come to fruition, head over to uh, crowdfunding website Indiegogo and take it from there. But the thing that, I, that got me wondering, Si, What's that? is where they got their inspiration from for that particularly bad smell. Was it perhaps your under jerseys? No, clearly not. Just, just wondering. Is it one of my pink t-shirts? Ah. Not too much. Well, I tell you what, Si, it's been an absolutely cracking show. Hasn't so it, just? Far. It's about to get even better with another trip down memory lane with old fabs. 2008 Milan San Remo, there's an elite group that gets to the bottom of the Poggio, so about two and a half kilometers to go. One of the riders from uh, Uskaltel goes, I think it's Landalus goes, uh, if, if my memory serves me well. Cancelar just gets on his wheel, waits, waits, hits him with a big attack. Poor lad can't even respond. Remember that set over seven hours in the saddle, 
bonkers. And he basically solos the last 1600 meters. I mean, it's absolutely incredible, despite the best efforts of the peloton and that lead group to sort of chase him down, holds on by about three or four seconds to really savor that victory. But that was something quite special. I'm glad he did manage to savor it though, because he has got a glittering Palmares at Milan Stone and Romeo alone, but that was his only victory, right? It was, yeah. One sole victory on the podium numerous occasions. Exactly, it's quite remarkable. But yeah, so I'm glad he managed to savour that one because, uh, and it was beautiful. All right, my my next one is in, still in 2008 actually, and it's a race he didn't. It's a race he didn't win. It was the Olympic Road Race uh, in Beijing, and if you remember, it was a really hilly course. It was an elite group of Rebellin, Andy Schleck, and Samuel Sanchez, and a couple of others were away. Fabian missed that split because it was on a dirty goat climb, so he bridged across on the descent, massive like motorway-like descent, seemingly 60, 70k an hour. He dropped the peloton and rode across, and then still had enough in the tank to finish third, and then lastly got promotion to second after David Rebellin's unfortunate positive. But that is, for me, one of just, just sums up Cancellara. Never that. say die. I mean, despite him not being a, pure, a climber by any stretch of the imagination, he, he uses the attributes that he's got. Yeah, I mean, he uses exactly. the sense to get across, never gives up at all. I do love that, that kind of do or die attitude. But it's not only his sporting success that, has, uh, that, make, that impresses me. He's been a real social media kind of, uh, kind of, I don't know, his impact on social media has been amazing. Yeah. He's, one of the most amusing pros on Instagram and uh, and Twitter in particular, and has even sort of unintentionally created his own language, known as Fabianese. That is quite remarkable, actually, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, there is still hope for Fabian fans because it would seem in 2016 that retirement doesn't always mean retirement. Tell us more. Well, Joaquin Rodriguez, who retired in August mm. after the Olympics, has now unretired and will be riding next year for Bahrain Merida. And then the following year and the year after that, he will be a consultant or a coach on the team. So, Fabian fans, keep your fingers crossed. Next year, I mean, there's no chance, is there? But still, you can always hope. You never know. You never know. He's got a few World Tour points, hasn't he? Well, yeah. I mean, he's undoubtedly going to be in demand. Watch this space. Should we start the room and we're going? <laughs> Keeping the Fabian theme rolling, Dom, for Tweet of the Week, has chosen this from the man himself, F underscore Cancellara. Yeah, how could you not, Dom? That's all, folks. It was a pleasure, and thanks to all of you for the support all over the world in the last 16 years. A little bit of Fabianese there, but not very much. Generally a well-constructed tweet, I think. Maybe somebody else wrote it. Yeah. No, he probably did write it. Yeah. But and it's very good. That's Fabian signing out. You can all unfollow him on Twitter now. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It's probably an awful lot no, of cool stuff. Like yeah, we do. Well, he's it? going to be a legend forevermore. Looks isn't very um, noble in that uh, picture. Looks a little bit like Che Guevara, doesn't he? He does. Just needs his or a little hat. <laughs> but yeah, looks very serious. It's time for comment of the week now. And as ever, you guys have been leaving some absolute belters under our videos. We do like reading them. The first one is from Mark Luke, actually under last week's GCN show, who said, "I'm disappointed. There was no mention of a repeat." world champion. You guys are slipping. Well pointed out. Fair play, that is some good punning. Um, we, we, we're normally on it with a bounce, but missed out there quite clearly. Bounce slash dad jokes. Indeed. Uh, well, this was under Why Do Cyclists Share Their Legs? And it was uh, posted by the Veggie Cyclist. Um, step one, put video on 0.25 speed. Step two, go to 20 seconds into the video. Step three, enjoy watching number 66 fall off his bike. Smiley face, 96 likes. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> And then, but what I really liked underneath was Andre Purari, who commented, uh, was it actually Matt falling off? Not on this occasion. Not on this occasion. Now, finally, under the presenter challenge, we had this from XXXXXX. Crikey, that who sounds says? like a channel and a half. Indeed, lasty didn't even try. That was at max a four out of 10 on the Pino and Vomitometer. <laughs> That spittle tells another story, I no, think. I think, I think was that was there. quite... I think it was nudging an 8.5. Yeah, and we would, you can see that we're all quite concerned legitimately about him when he finishes, yeah. aren't we? There's just to say, like... I think that's more one of my favourite thumbnails of all time. That one of Lasty. <laughs> on the channel this week, on Wednesday, we've got more from the legend that is Sven Nace. On Thursday, we've got some winter riding tips for you. And on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Yeah, Saturday's pro bike is Team Sky Rider Nicholas Roach. Sunday, we've been telling you uh, for the last three weeks that it's coming up, but it is coming up. It's inside the Bell Torture Chamber, helmet torture chamber, not just like a generic one, obviously. And then Monday is a video that took a long time to film at. We tested out the latest internal cable routing hacks. 
And you can imagine it took a long time. Does it involve hoovers? It did. And vacuum cleaners. It did. I so. I know my internal cabling hacks. Okay, it's time now for Extreme Corner. And this week, we're keeping it in-house because the lads from GMBN have been on a shoot down in Italy. And they, they go, those guys know how to ride a bike. Absolutely. Check this out. This is very cool. Donnie and Scott. Please speak to me first. Those guys can ride. They certainly do know how to ride. They've uh, definitely been listening to my, my tips. I often give them a bit of natter on a Wednesday evening. Uh, they've delivered. Nice. Right, unfortunately, that is the end of the GCN show for now. But before we leave you, do make sure you head over to the GCN shop because we have got a load of riding clothing on sale now, including the winter kit. So that is very timely. You should definitely jump on that. But not only that, Si, we've now introduced a women's casual range of GCN clothing such as this. Yeah. You asked and we've delivered. So uh, head over there and check it out. There's lots of cool new stuff. Absolutely. And uh, I'd be interested to know which of us uh, is going to model it on the show. Yeah. I'd imagine don't know who's got the best hips. Yeah, there's a thought. Anyway, moving swiftly on, perhaps you'd like to see some more GCN videos. And why not? Why not click down there and get through to our latest, The Presenter Challenge, which has been going down a storm, hasn't it? Thanks to Carlton Kirby's commentary. It certainly has. Or to roll back the years, and just in honour of Fabian Cancellara, have it clicking just down here for Tom Bonin versus Fabian Cancellara. I think it was about half a year, actually, after was roll it? back. It's yeah. rolling back six months. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> do make sure you subscribe to GCN as well. To do that, just click on the globe. Don't forget to share and like.